Would you agree that proper gear maintenance is one of the keys to a successful fly fishing trip? And have you ever lost a nice fish later to realize that it was because of an issue with your terminal tackle or gear? And the ultimate blunder, breaking your fly rod. Would you listen if we had some tips that would prevent these ultimate trip disasters from occurring? Today, I'm going to share five tips that will help you prepare for your fishing season and prevent common gear mistakes with some easy tasks you can take care of this week. This is the Web Fly Swing Podcast, where I show you the best places to travel to for fly fishing, how to find the best resources, tools, and tips to prepare for that big trip, and what you can do to give back to the fish species you love. Hey, I'm Dave, host of the Wet Fly Swing Podcast. I've been fly fishing since I was a little kid. I grew up around a little fly shop and have created one of the largest fly fishing podcasts in this country. I've also interviewed more of the greatest fly anglers than just about anyone in the world. In this short solo episode, I'm going to share a checklist summary of the essential tips on prepping your gear for fishing this season. You'll find out how to inspect uh, and clean your fly line, how to refresh your fly box so you are ready to go, and how to inspect and fix your waders if you have a leak. And my favorite, the bonus luxury items and tips you might not be thinking about that you should have in your satchel this year. You can read the full blog post that this podcast is based on at Jackson Hole Fly Company at the Jackson Hole Fly Company blog. You can also go to wetflyswing.com slash gear maintenance, which will direct you over to that page. But before we get into the tips today, I want to share an embarrassing story and experience that occurred at a FFI event. And this was kind of like the first steps of a event to learn to be a casting instructor, to get certification. And at the time, um, this is quite a few years ago, but I was thinking about, you know, kind of taking my casting to the next level. And like a lot of people, I thought it was maybe going to be easier uh, than what I what I saw there. But uh, long story short, you know, we we're at this event. And to be honest with you, I don't remember a lot of the details of the event, but I do remember this one moment where we were kind of casting. We had done the initial um, kind of pre-prep. We were out there on the lawn, on the grass. I had my rod, my, my trout rod. I don't remember which one it was. But I was casting, and the, the idea here was to make, we were trying to cast for distance and hit these different targets. And I was casting, and I felt good with my cast, but the line just wasn't going out very far, and I wasn't coming close. And the instructor came over, and and he looked kind of, and he, he asked me, you know, what's going on? And I gave him my rod, and, and he made it a, a cast, and he looked at it, and he set it down, and he gave me his rod, and he said, cast this. And I took that rod, and I made my first cast, and it pretty much went out there like a country mile. And I was just, like, kind of blown away. And right away I realized, like, wow, I wasn't taking care of my gear Simple, simple thing like cleaning your fly line or getting a new fly line if you have to would have changed this. You know, this wasn't the rod. This wasn't the way of the line. It was the fact that I hadn't been cleaning it. And in fact, I hadn't really cleaned my lines up to this point very often at all. And so I was using a line that was super dirty. It was even cracked throughout. So it had cracks. It just, it wasn't efficient. I was losing energy throughout But as soon as I felt that rod and made that cast, I knew right away, like, wow, this is amazing. So I think the rest of that day, I don't remember much of the rest, but I know I kept using um, his rod in some of the, in the demonstrations and things like that. And I kind of tucked my fly away and it was definitely embarrassing because not only did he see it, but others were there uh, to kind of see, you know, we were right next to each other. So it was clear what was going on and uh, and also, I don't remember the names of the instructor. I, it's been so long that I actually don't remember the details. But it's funny how these stories stick to you and you remember these one, these one, this one part. And this I remember like it was yesterday. So there you go. That's the story and the tip to remind you. And we're going to talk about this today. But to clean your fly line, this is very easy. I'm going to show you a video. There's going to be a little clip where I actually demonstrate cleaning your fly line. We'll have a link uh, to that in the show notes as well. Um, But let's jump into it. The essential tips on prepping your gear, the five essential tips from Jackson Hole Fly Company. But first, let's start with uh, cleaning your fly rod and reel. Number one, clean your fly rod and reel. And this is just kind of goes to rod inspection and maintenance and just checking over your gear. So basically what they say in this is thoroughly examine your fly rod for indications of wear or damage, right? Check for cracks, ferrules, um, 
you know, anything that looks like it might compromise the integrity of your rod. And this could be a, a little chip, something, so you could kind of rub your, your hands up and down your rod, just kind of inspect it and make sure it's clean. You could take a warm, uh, you know, kind of, or just a wet rag and clean it off a little bit and just make sure everything's good to go. And same thing with your reel. I remember my dad back in the fly shop when he used to take old reels in from people that weren't working very well, and he would take them apart. He had a whole kit of tools, and sometimes he would take them apart and fix them, right, Take them and, and put them back together. But I always remember he used to spray, and I think at the time he was just using WD-40, right, a little bit of grease, and there might be something better to use today. But even that could do it. Just get your, your rod and make sure the drag, everything's r- running smoothly because, you know, especially on some of those older reels, you know, the drags don't always last uh, a long time if you're not keeping them clean. So you can run them through water, um, but just make sure it's running smooth, and uh, and that's number one. Okay, number two, check and replace your fly line. So going back to the story I talked about today, you know, what uh, what Jackson Hole says is examine fly lines for cracks, fraying, memory coils that could affect casting. Cleaning your fly line extends the life and performance. Consider replacing fly lines if you see significant wear, right? So that's the key. Check out your line. You could basically just run it through your hands, and if you feel cracks, things like that, you can tell right away if you might need to uh, replace it. Uh, hopefully, maybe you just need to clean it, and I'll put that link to how to clean your fly line from our YouTube channel. Uh, really simple. Basically, you just basically get two buckets, one with some warm, uh, lukewarm uh, kind of uh, clean water and one with some soap water, just really mild stuff, and you're basically just going to strip your line off in that bucket, run through a few steps, and that cleans it, and then you're good to go. And so clean and check your line and then also backing, right? Uh, so they say verify strength and condition of your backing beginning the season to replace these if needed. The same thing. So typically backing, depending on what you use, usually is pretty good. It sits on your reel. Um, so like I said, check out that video. We'll put that in the show notes. All right, number three. This is a, this is one of the fun ones. Organize and refresh your fly box uh, and, and JH, Flyco, uh, JH Flyco, a.k.a. Jackson Hole Fly Company, also says inventory your flies sort through your flies and your fly box discarding any either that are damaged beyond repair make a list of what you have what you need to focus on and just basically overall look at your patterns and organize them right restock the essentials whatever you know you're going to need and this is kind of the fun part because you can kind of dump out your flies get them reorganized so you know exactly where everything is so when you're on the water and you're fishing and you have a size you know 14 dry fly and you need a size 16 or 18 you know exactly where it is, right? And so this is kind of the fun part. So go in, reorganize all the flies um, and add to your selection. And of course, uh, Jackson Hole has flies that you can uh, choose if you go to uh, to their website as well. All right, so let's go to number four. And this is also a good one, a very important one, especially when it's cooler out. If you're wearing waders, inspect your gear for leaks. And this is boots and waders. So First thing uh, they say, inspect for leaks, examine waders for leak areas, excessive wear, small leaks can often be repaired with waterproof sealant. A significant damage um, can require more. I'm going to talk about this in a second. Basically, that's something. So looking for weeks and the, uh, leaks and then boot care as well, checking the condition of your boots, focusing on the soles and laces, ensure the soles have proper grip. And again, I've had this before when studs potentially could fall out of your boots, right? And if you're on the water and you need studs and they're not there, uh, that can be a slippy, slippery and actually can be a dangerous day. I was recently on the water where uh, I had some boots that that happened to, and I really had a hard time waiting uh, because I just didn't have proper gear. Uh, so again, just a reminder uh, that this happens to everybody and to check that. But here's the tip on uh, patching your waders. If you have some small pinholes, things like that, of course, if you have a big hole or tear, you have to do some other things. But if you want to find a hole, this is the easy tip. Just get some alcohol, uh, like kind of rubbing alcohol, and get in a little spray bottle. And if you kind of know where your waders were leaking, maybe the season before, typically in the knees or lower down, you can kind of go to that spot, turn your waders inside out, and then spray them with the, the alcohol, and it'll turn kind of a dark color, and you'll see it. So you want to dry off the waders and then spray them with this alcohol. And uh, and if you don't know, you can just turn them inside out and just spray a light uh, mist over the entire you know wader. Uh, spray it or at least the areas where you think definitely get the most wear and see what happens. If these are little pinholes or abrasions, you can fix these, like we said, with some aqua seal or some kind of, you know, fabric patching kit that, that work. If it's small, a little aqua seal, something like that works really well. Okay. And number five, this is essential. 
So this is some of the basics. Again, just going back to the stuff you should be checking, your vests, slings, and packs. Before heading out, scrutinize the gear um, that you use. Pay special attention to zippers, snaps, and Velcro connectors. These are the first to show wear and can lead to equipment loss if they fail. Consider replacing worn components. So there you go. So if your zippers, things like that are broken, um, right, you don't want that to happen and lose some fly boxes in the water or gear. Uh, essential tools, a well-prepared fly fisher's kit, including essential tools like nippers, a leader straightener, floatant, uh, forceps, hook removal, strike indicators, all this stuff. So you want to go through your, your vest and just basically lay it all out, empty it out, shake off all the dirt that's down on the bottom uh, in your sling or vest or pack, and just start from scratch with everything and, and make a list and make sure you got enough fly float and all that stuff because what's going to happen is it, you're going to be on the water if you don't have enough or you don't have the split shot or something, you know, you, you might not have that opportunity to catch that nice fish. All right. So from Jackson Hole, uh, we are still going here. We got a couple more of these essential apparel and protection. Spring weather can be unpredictable, they say. So pack layers, adapt to the changing conditions. Don't forget to wear UV protection and a uh, JH Flyco hat for shade. Uh, build a backup kit. This is always a good tip as well. They say assemble backup with extras like spools, strike indicators, uh, other things that uh, you, that might wear out. Leader is a good one. You know, if you're down to a little bit of your end of three pound or you know or five extra whatever leader, having an extra spool or having extra of everything in your box is a good idea to have uh, to bring on. So I like to have backups of everything if I can. Batteries, you name it. And they end with a first aid kit which is always critical on a kit. You never know when something crazy will happen and a first aid kit will be necessary. All right, and we are going to wrap this up with some bonus um, mis miscellaneous essentials. So licenses and regulations, of course. Don't forget your license. Just a reminder, uh, research and adapt. They say learn about the insect life and patterns. Stay updated on stream conditions. So again, we have a podcast episode here with hundreds and hundreds of episodes of information that you can dig into on all this uh, entomology, whatever you need, and I'm here to help as well. And finally, I love that they ended with practice casting. And they say it's been a while since you've cast a fly line, spent some time practicing your casting technique. This can help shake off any rust and improve your accuracy and presentation on the water. Boom. I love that, uh, that Jackson Hole Fly Company ended with practice casting. We've been talking a lot about that. In fact, we've had our kind of five essential tips that I've heard most from many, many, many of our guests, our greatest guests we've had on. And they say, you know, practice casting. This can be before you're on the water and should be actually, if you're rusty, if you haven't been out there, get in your yard, put a little piece of yarn on the end instead of a fly, tie it on there and just practice casting, getting comfortable with your cast again. You know, if you want to put some hoops out there, and if you look at the best of the best casters that are out there, the fly casters, they're all practicing a lot. And I'd say probably many of them are casting, practicing as much as they're fishing, right? So so just realize that's what, if you want to get really good at this, you want to practice. The more you, you practice, the better you're going to get. So that's it. All right. So I'm going to leave that right there, the essential gear maintenance checklist. You can head over to wetflyswing.com slash gear maintenance right now. Gear maintenance will get you there. And you can see this full blog post that Jackson Hole Fly Company put together and goes into some more depth on the details uh, on what I talked about here. I will also put some links uh, in the show notes uh, of this podcast episode for the video I talked about, a clean your line. So you can take a look at that. And there will also be a link to this Jackson Hole uh, article. I think right now the, the call to action is if you only take away one item today, just implement one of these. Uh, I would love to hear if you've implemented uh, all of these before you get out. But if you're, especially if you're new, just try one of these, right? If you have a rod, right? If you haven't practiced casting, if you haven't checked your line, just do one of these right now and, and get your gear ready for the season. And then you can uh, prepare as you go and, uh, and you're gonna have more success. And definitely when you get that big fish on the line, and it's that fish of a lifetime and it's real and out line, you don't have to worry about your leader, your fly line, your rod, your reel, anything seizing up or breaking, because you know you checked it. And you also know that you got plenty of gear in your in your uh, sling or your pack that you can pull it out. And if you run out of anything, you've got backups. So that's it. I'm going to leave it there today. Hope you enjoyed this solo episode. You can check in with me anytime. Dave at wetflyswing.com if you have any feedback for this episode. If you'd like a topic for us to cover on these solo episode series, you can send me an email there. 
and just put uh, and just put solo episode in the comments and I'll follow up with you. And I would love to connect. If you haven't connected with me yet, that's a great way to say hi. And I'd love to say hi back to you. That's it for today's solo session. Hope you enjoyed this one. And I hope you have a great morning, great afternoon, or great evening, wherever in the world you are. And I look forward to catching you on that next episode. Talk to you real soon.